So obje the objectives of this video um, is the explanation of internal loading of a structure, uh, followed by uh, indicating bending moment diagrams, shear force diagrams, and axial force diagrams, summary procedure. Uh, just a theoretical video about all this stuff, okay? So initially, when a structure is firstly exposed to a loading, the loads are transferred from a point of action through structural elements down to the base supports, okay? Um, so what does this mean? As we said in the previous video, if we have a force anywhere along a structural element, um, it's just transferred down through a load path down to the base support. That's what it is pretty much, okay? So this procedure induces internal actions or stress resultants, okay? Um, so when we have loading loads transferred down to the foundations, um, we can find that there will be internal actions and stress resultants which are created. Um, and they can vary throughout the structure, obviously, because different points are subjected to different loadings. Um, different structural elements have different purposes. So they, um, some structural elements, for example, are made to withstand, withstand tension better than others, so they can work in tension more than others, whereas some elements can do compression better than others, so they have higher compression um, um, forces in them. So that's why the internal actions or stress resultants can vary throughout the whole structure. So how do we establish the distribution of internal actions? This can be done by uh, cal doing calculations, obviously. And we can do calculations of axial force diagrams, which are tension and compression forces, shear force diagram, which is shear forces, as we've seen before. So what is tension? Tension is pulling apart a structure from each of its sides, you know, from each of its ends, whereas compression is pushing into the center of a structural element. Shearing forces is, for example, if we have two plates connected to each other and they rub against each other, that's a shear force. And finally, we have bending moments, which can be indicated through bending moment diagrams. And in this course, we're going to be drawing bending moment diagrams on the compression side of a, stru of a structure, okay? So, to work out internal forces, we can use axial force diagrams, shear force diagrams, and bending moment diagrams. So if we look at this simply supported beam here, length L, as we said, the pin on the left hand side has um, a vertical restraint and a horizontal restraint, and the roller has uh, a vertical restraint only. It can't move up and down, but it could move left and right. The following axial force diagram, shear force diagram, and, uh, and the bending moment diagram the following are the axial force diagram, shear force diagram, and bending moment diagram of the following simply supported beam. So as you can see, since um, axial force diagram usually represents the horizontal forces, okay? So tension or compression. So um, in this uh, example, you can see that in the pin, there's a horizontal restraint, but everywhere else, there's no other horizontal force. So this one will be equal to zero, since it ha doesn't have to react to anything. So immediately we can tell that the axial force diagram is zero. Whereas um, the, shear force, uh, the shear force diagram looks something like this. We have a shear force of positive WL on 2. W is, for example, our loading distribution function times L, which is the span, and we divide by 2. And at the other end, we have a negative shear force of minus WL on 2. Um, obviously, this is the final result, and you have to do calculations, but I'm just showing you what a, a typical axial force diagram, shear force diagram, and bending moment diagram can look like. And the bending moment diagram for the following simply supported beam looks something like this, right? Just a concave down parabola, okay? So it's just a concave down parabola with a maximum bending moment of WL squared on 8, okay? So that's just an example of axial force, shear force, and bending moment diagrams. Next we have a summary of the procedure of bending moment diagrams. So initially we draw the free body diagram of the whole structure. As we've previously established that free body diagrams are the most vital step in engineering to help you visualize external forces. Okay. Secondly, we need to establish equilibrium. Um, we can use the sum of forces equals zero and the horizontal and vertical direction. We can also use the sum of moments about a certain point to equal zero provided the, f the structure is statically determinate, we can solve using equilibrium. The next step, and probably a very one of the most important steps, is to cut the structure at critical locations 
so that internal actions can be solved at different intervals. So for example, if you have a look at the following diagram, okay, so it's just a cantilever because we have a fixed support at one end, okay, we have a UDL at the end, we have two point loads here. So um, we start from the left hand, we can cut from the left or right hand side, but the most common uh, direction of cutting in this course is actually from the left hand side. So whenever we see something new occurring, we do a new cut, okay? So if we start on this side, we immediately take one cut. So that's the first thing you do. You take one cut immediately. We keep moving to the right. Now that we have a point load, something new is happening, we take a second cut, okay? We keep moving to the right, new point load, so we take another cut. We keep moving to the right, now there's a UDL, something new is happening, so we take a fourth cut. So as you can see, we have four cuts in this diagram. The first cut, the interval of the first cut is from here to here. Now we have a new point load, so the interval of the second cut is from here to here. Now we have a new point load, so the interval of the third cut is from this point load to the beginning of the UDL. And finally, the fourth cut is from the beginning of the UDL to the free hanging edge at the end of the UDL. Okay? So four cuts, the main thing to know is that whenever we have something new occurring, an external force, you take a new cut. Okay? The fourth step is drawing the free body diagrams of the cut proportions, including actions at the cuts. I'll show you this in the future. So, fifth, we have to establish our sign convention for um, internal actions. And it's, this is extremely important, and we have to stick to one sign convention, so you don't confuse yourself, okay? So, if we cut from the left, our internal actions look as follows. Our bending moment, sorry, our moment is anti-clockwise. Our shear force V points down. Our axial force N points out to the right. Whereas, when cutting from the right, so from the right hand side we're cutting. Our moment is clockwise, our shear is uh, vertically upwards, and our um, axial force is pointing to the left. Now as you can see, they have their opposite in direction, and the reason being is that if you cut from the left, okay, and then decide to cut from the right, then these are going to balance each other out. And for this reason, when you're using a different sound, conve different sound convention, they have opposite directions. But it's extremely important to stick to one sign convention, and this is the common sign convention that will be used in the following uh, unit of study. So cutting from the right, we have an anti-clockwise moment, a shear force pointing down, and an axial force pointing out to the right. Whereas cutting from the right, we have a bending, we have a moment which is clockwise, a shear force pointing up, and an axial force pointing to the left. Okay, so just remember to stick to one sign convention. Next, we have to establish the equilibriums equations of equilibrium of the internal actions so sum of forces and using the moments to equal zero and finally from here once these are calculated the internal actions we can draw the bending moment shear force diagram and axial force diagrams so i hope this video has helped you understand and you'll see heaps of examples in the coming up videos thank you